So as we've let JavaScript into our lives and we brought it into our web pages, we've ex started to expose ourselves to a bunch of different types of security problems caused by JavaScript itself. One of the common uh, security problems is something that's known as a cross-site scripting attack. Um, what does that mean? So uh, the, the browser tries to isolate various content from uh, other content, and it tries to apply something that's called the same origin policy. The same origin policy means that if I get some content from a particular provider and then some JavaScript from that same site, then the JavaScript I retrieve from that site can only access content that also came from the same site. Why is this important? So for example, let's say I have a, um, I have a web page that's provided by my bank to use, and maybe that web page has some ads on it that require JavaScript. I don't want the JavaScript that exists to manipulate those ads to have access to all of the other content on the page that's provided by my bank, because that content is quite sensitive. Now, there are a bunch of different ways to launch cross-site scripting attacks. Um, frequently, what, what people will try to do is they will try to exploit weaknesses in the web page that will cause it to accidentally run JavaScript in the context of that page. Because if I run, so for example, if you go to Gmail and you open up your web console and you start typing JavaScript, you're you. You could probably send mail. You could probably delete things. You can do all sorts of fun stuff. Same thing if you did this for Facebook. So one type of cross-site scripting attack that's actually um, not necessarily as common as the others is called a self-cross-site scripting attack. And let me give you an example of one of these. So um, I don't know, it was maybe four or five years ago, I had a friend that worked at Facebook, and he was really frustrated because what was happening was people were launching these uh, scripting attacks on Facebook's website. Why were they doing this? So people were getting these um, messages that sent, sent to them saying that they could watch the Osama bin Laden death video. Okay, There is no Osama bin Laden death video. Uh, but they were told, you can watch this video. Here's what you have to do. You have to take this huge blob of stuff, which was JavaScript, and paste it into your browser's address bar. And so what was happening is, if you did that, the browser would run that JavaScript in the context of the page. And keep in mind, you're on Facebook, so you're logged in as you, and what the JavaScript would do is it would basically send the same message to all of your friends. It would use APIs that Facebook has that Facebook's own JavaScript uses internally to send out that message. And so they would get the same thing, and at least a few of them would be like, oh, I want to really want to see this gory video. Why do, want to people watch, why do people want to watch stuff like that? It doesn't make any sense to me. But anyway, you would do that, and off you would go. They, a, a more common way of doing this is to exploit some feature of the page that's not properly uh, programmed. So for example, the page might have a, a form, and if I can trick you somehow into, to, into putting JavaScript into that form, or maybe I send you a link, and that link has JavaScript in the link, and that JavaScript runs in the page when you load the link for some reason, usually because the page isn't very well designed, and then that JavaScript will do something like, you know, try to steal your passwords or look for information on the page that's sensitive or something like this. So, you know, as we've, um, you know, again, as, as we've done, we're starting to do all this really sensitive stuff in the browser, um, and the browser runs this programming language called JavaScript, and so some of the security problems that we used to see at the operating system level are really starting to emerge much more at the browser level. An interesting thought experiment is the following. You, know, you probably have some sort of password that you set up when you set up Windows or Mac that you have to enter from time to time because you're trying to install some software or something like that. You probably also have a password. Maybe you have a password manager. You have a password for like a website uh, like Gmail or something like that. So which password, if, you, you know, if somebody forced you to divulge one of those passwords, which one would you rather give up? I would much rather allow people to add and remove software from my computer than I would to allow people to access my banking websites or my Gmail or all of the other tools that I use in the browser. So the browser has really now become this repository of very sensitive information about us and people are trying to attack that and expose security flaws in the browser itself and on pages that the browser loads.